Okay, so you've gotten the hang of a pretty basic modern calligraphy alphabet. Now you wanna start putting your own style on it. Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter, and in this video, I'm gonna show you three super easy tricks that you can apply to your alphabet right away to make them look totally different and stylized. Before we jump in though, I do wanna mention that I have a full workbook all about bouncing and stylizing your calligraphy, and I'm gonna to link to this down below, but basically this one goes over some guidelines that you should learn before starting to stylize so that it doesn't turn into a mess. And then it's got lots of different alphabet styles and traceables and words and stuff like that to help you go through it and get a little bit more help. So again, that's linked down below, but in this video, I just wanna show you three really quick game changers that you can walk away with and start playing with right away. So for this video, I'm using Rhodia graph paper, really nice smooth graph paper for your brush pens. And then I'm using a Tombow Fudenosuke hard tip, just a small black brush pen. These are two of my favorite tools, but you can really use whatever you want for this. You could even be using a, a pen that's not flexible just to get the shapes of the stylizing and then come back and add the pressures later. So really whatever you have will be fine for starting to play with this. The first thing I want you to do is start writing out your alphabet on the left-hand side of the page. So using the basic strokes and creating your basic modern calligraphy alphabet that you already know. Side note, if you've never learned a basic modern calligraphy alphabet and you have no idea how to do this, I need you to stop this video right now and go watch this one instead because you're missing a lot of crucial steps if you're jumping right in with stylizing. So don't skip the other stuff first. Stop this video. I don't even want you to continue. All right, so I've got my basic alphabet written here out on each side of the page just spaced out enough that I'll be able to play around with them. And next we're gonna go through my three super easy tricks. Now you'll notice that not each of these tricks goes with every single one of the letters in this alphabet. Some will apply to some and some will apply to others and that's totally fine. So trick number one is to exaggerate your A senders and D senders. So exaggerating the loops basically. So you're gonna look for any letters that have loops. And so the first one I notice right here is the letter B. So this is pretty straightforward and you can do this really however you want because now you're starting to stylize in your own way. But basically you're just gonna exaggerate that loop and make it bigger and keep playing with it until you're happy with it. So you can go really nice and big and see how that automatically gives your letter a little bit more style, even though it's still the same size, it looks a lot bigger and bolder. Or you can go slightly smaller than that if you wanted to. Still exaggerate it a bit, but not too much. And the other thing you'll notice here is that often when I exaggerate my loops, I start to bend the stem of that uh, ascending loop a little bit. Here it's really straight. Here it's a little bit bent, so that's kind of like a trick 1.5 for you. So that's exaggerating the loops on my B. So take a second and just go through and do that on the other letters in this alphabet. So D, F, G, this would go for D senders as well. So if you did this on the G, draw your letter G regular first. And then as you come down towards this loop, you can make it bigger. Okay, you can play with that however you want to. So go through the alphabet beside all the letters that have loops and try making them bigger. Remember that you're leaving the rest of the letter intact. You don't wanna get messy with it and screw up the actual basic strokes and the legibility of your letter. So make sure that you're still keeping things completely legible as you do this. Okay, so already you can start to see that these letters start looking pretty stylized with just that one little switch. Trick number two is along similar lines and it's gonna to be to the same letters, but now it's to remove the loops entirely. So if we go back to our letter B, for example, for this one, I'm going to just draw my upstroke and then a straight line. And that might not be your favorite looking one with the B, but on some of these letters, it's gonna look really nice. And if you do your whole alphabet this way and keep it really consistent, so for example, that D, that looks pretty nice and it can look really pretty and classy. Now with the F, it's gonna look strange if you don't have anything on the bottom loop here. So what I normally do with this one is I'll make it straight at the top and keep the loop at the bottom. Just simplifies the F a little bit. And with the G and any of the ones with a D sender, what you're gonna do is actually 
kind of make it look like it's going to loop and then just leave it. So it starts to loop a little bit, but it would look really strange if you had it with nothing at all. If you just had it a straight line here, that looks like a Q. It doesn't look like a G anymore. So, and it, the other thing to note is that this looks a little bit strange when it's by itself as a letter on the page, but once you have it in a word, it can be really helpful. And where this comes in is if you had two G's back and back to back, so let's say you had a word like soggy, that's the only one I can think of with two G's in the middle, um, but you might have one G here that's got a big exaggerated flourished, which we're not talking about today, but it, let's say it has a giant flourish on it. And then you go to put your next G beside it and you don't wanna do another really competing loop. A lot of the time you'll see people just do a really simple loopless stem like that. So it still looks like a G and it's still gonna be legible when it's in the rest of your word, but it's just a really nice technique to start playing with. So continue on doing that with the rest of your letters that have stems like this and just kind of see what you like and dislike. Now again, these styles are not gonna be for everyone so you don't have to use them all, but it's fun to experiment with them at the beginning. Now this T I'm showing already doesn't have a loop, but often you will see people draw their T's with a loop. So this is sort of done in the opposite direction where the first one I drew without a loop and the second one I drew with. So that's, those are two different style options there. All right, so that's thing one and two, which are exaggerating the loops and removing the loops. And the third one is my personal favorite. So this one is where you're gonna start playing with your entrance and exit strokes. So for example, if we go to the letter A here, this is your entrance stroke, this is your exit stroke. The entrance is at the beginning, the exit is at the end. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna start to play with it. Now the first easiest way you can do this is to flip your entrance stroke. So usually you draw your entrance stroke or your upstroke in this slightly angled upwards direction. Now I want you to take it and flip it and I want you to kind of put it like this. So like it's curved left and up instead of right and up, if that makes sense. And then you're gonna draw the rest of your A. So see how that little tiny switch makes it look a little bit more stylized than having it just a really straight rigid upstroke. And then the next option you can do is have that extend a little bit down below the baseline and come up. And then at the same time, I want you to now play with your exit stroke. So where this comes straight up to your waist, now I want you to give it a little bit of flair. And those two little tiny switches makes such a huge difference in the style of that letter, even though the foundation of the letter is still the same. So you still have an upstroke, an oval, and an underturn. You're just putting a little bit of style onto it. So you can do this with virtually any letter in the alphabet. If you did this on your B, let's say we wanted to combine that flipped upstroke and this exaggerated loop. You can see how much this B will look like a different letter now that we're putting a little tiny bit of style on it. So this is the same foundational B as you had on the far left side here with a tiny bit more flair and it looks like a totally different style. Same thing with the C here, you can change your upstroke at the beginning and then on your exit stroke, give it a little bit of flair. So keep playing with that. Again, this is my favorite step. And some of the more boring letters like E are gonna end up looking that much cooler when you just add these tiny little tweaks. And then when you get to letters like F, you can start combining all three of these things. So let's say we wanted to do that curved upstroke, the curved entrance stroke, and then you wanted a straight downstroke and an exaggerated loop at the bottom, and then another fancy exit stroke. So this looks a little bit weird on its own, but it might look really cool next to the other letters once you start stylizing them all. So I want you to just keep going through the alphabet, play with all of these things and combining them all, and you'll really start to see huge changes in your style just with those three little tiny tweaks. Lastly, I just wanna show you what this might look like on a word. So I'm gonna write the word hello really plain and simple to start. And now I'm gonna show that exact same hello, the same foundation, just with the exaggerated loops and the modified exit and entrance strokes. So tiny tweak, big result. 
And then lastly, exact same hello at the top here, except without any loops at all. So you can easily see how very different you can get your style just with the tiniest tweaks and they don't have to be very hard and they don't really have to change up any of the structure of your alphabet. So test these out and have fun with it. And remember that this is modern calligraphy. There are no rules. There are some foundations you should learn, which I hope you have already. And then you can start putting your own spin on it and just having a lot of fun. So don't hold back, just kind of start experimenting and that's how you're gonna find your style. So again, I'm gonna to link to my full workbook for this down below, but the next video I'm gonna to link to is also about bounce calligraphy, which is definitely the most popular way of stylizing. And in that one, I give you a really good rundown of how to start doing that as well. So combined with this, you're gonna be off and running with stylizing your own alphabet. So I'll see you over there.